television reporter April O'Neill was doing a remote broadcast outside a mysterious back alley warehouse. Crime. It's just something we take for granted in the big city. But recently, three scientific equipment companies have been robbed and some high-tech machinery stolen. The strange part is that the method of the robberies is anything but high-tech. Experts say it can only be the work of ninjas, an ancient band of Japanese warriors. We're here at Technology Central, for it may be the next target of these mysterious burglars. I'll report as soon as anything develops. April O'Neil, Happy Hour News. Back to you, Jeff. Okay, that's a wrap. This isn't the safest neighborhood in the world. Let's go. What are you, a bunch of sissies? This is gonna be fun. We're the news media for crying out loud. Who'd want to hurt us? Uh, them maybe? The cameraman nervously pointed over April's shoulder. She turned around in surprise. Huh? A group of punks were stalking out of the shadows. Their leader angrily waved a metal rod. April sprang into action. Get the camera! But the television crewmen were terrified. They flung down their equipment and ran off. Uh, I think I left the iron on in my apartment. Me too! The leader of the punks scowled at April. We got a message for you, lady. Oh? The big boss wants you to stick to reporting fashion shows. Okay, uh, sure. No problem. We don't believe you. Then here. Catch! In one smooth motion, April picked up the television camera and hurled it straight at the thug. <coughs> April turned and started to run. Knowing she couldn't outrun the punks, she squeezed through the narrow opening of a large sewer grate at a street curb. Ouch! This is a tight squeeze. You must be putting on weight, O'Neill. The punks weren't going to let April escape so easily. They pried open a manhole cover and followed April down into the sewers. Oh. <laughs> this is great. Oh, I really must be onto something hot if they're trying to kill me. Get her! Get her! They're gaining on me. April looked back over her shoulder and crashed headlong into a brick wall. Oh. As April dizzily lifted her head, she saw the punks looming over her. Sign off time, April O'Neil. But as the leader lifted his metal rod, something struck him on the chin. Chill out, homeboy. It was an enormous green turtle. A second punk tried to attack the turtle, but he wasn't fast enough. Watch it with that thing, pal. A third punk whipped out a pistol. You are dead meat. Another turtle's sword sliced right through the pistol's barrel. You shouldn't play with guns. Another turtle knocked another punk's sword out of his hands. Weird looking dudes. Two punks tried to attack one of the turtles. But he easily flung the punks against the brick wall. Soon all four punks were out cold, with their weapons jumbled in a heap. Oh. April was shaking with relief. She looked gratefully at the four strange turtles. I don't know who you are, but thanks. <gasps> You're not human! We're dealing with a real mind here. The four turtles advanced towards April. You... your... turtles! I can't handle this. Hey, whoa! Whoa! Ah, uh, she's no fun. She fainted. Elsewhere, someone was watching April and her rescuers on a large screen. What the devil? A short time later, deeper in the sewers, April slowly woke up from her fainting spell. She was in a large room filled with furniture, books, even a TV. Oh, my head. Where am I? Now I remember those turtles. Some hot tea? What? A, a giant rat? Sure enough, a giant rat was holding out a mug of hot tea. Calm yourself. You are safe. But who? What? One of the turtles stepped into the room. Pizza time! I've got some pepperoni and ice cream, jelly bean and mushroom, 
And my favorite, anchovies and peanut butter. This is seriously grossing me out. I start off to do a story about some high-tech robberies, and I end up talking to a bunch of turtles and their pet rat. Who are you guys? Uh, perhaps I can best explain. Mm -hmm. The rat then told April the following story. The story of my young friends and I is really the story of a man named Hamato Yoshi. In Japan, there is a ninja clan known as The Foot. Yoshi was a quiet man. He was their teacher in the warrior ways of enlightenment. But one student sought to usurp his leadership. His name was Oroku Sake. One day, when a master teacher visited The Foot School, he made his move. In a flash, Oroku Sake whipped out his knife and pinned Yoshi's robe to the wall. All the students bowed down to their master teacher, except for Yoshi. Bow down before our beloved master. What? I can't move. My rope is pinned. He reached behind his back and found out the reason. A knife. The other teachers saw the weapon and turned on poor Yoshi. Treacherous dog. You brought to kill our honorable master. I know. For this misdeed, you should be banished from the Foot Clan forever. What say you, honorable master? I say, throw the bum out. Saki had won his battle to control the clan. In Japan, under Saki's leadership, the foot became an army of crime. In disgrace, Yoshi fled to America and was forced to live in the sewers. His only friends were the rats, until one day some new friends came. Oof. Down the drain, a boy walking on the street above the sewer tripped. The glass bowl he was carrying broke. Four little turtles came down the grate and landed on Yoshi. He made them his pets. Then one day, Yoshi found the turtles covered in a strange glowing liquid. <gasps> Yoshi picked up the turtles and looked at the liquid. It was a powerful mutagen. It caused whoever touched it to take on the form of whatever animal they had most recently been in contact with. The turtles began to become human. They had most recently been with Yoshi. But Yoshi had most recently been with the rats. April pointed to the giant rat telling the story. Then Hamato Yoshi is you. The turtles grinned. You've got a mind like a steel trap, lady. Splinter nodded at the turtles. Knowing that they would be outcasts, I trained them in the art of ninjutsu. They named me Splinter, and I in turn named them after my favorite Renaissance painters. <laughs> As Splinter introduced them, each turtle came forward with a weapon. Hey! This is Donatello. His simple wooden staff can disarm any adversary. Hey! Here is Raphael. No sword on earth can withstand his sai. Hey! As for Leonardo, his swordsmanship is unmatched. Meet Michelangelo, master of the whirling nunchakus. Michelangelo picked up a pizza and spun it around on his finger. And master of the whirling pizzas. That is how they became the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. So do you know who dropped the mutagen? No, but one day we'll find them and force them to return our master to his human form. What do you think, April? I think you did those robberies. What? what? Ain't you up on current events, lady? We just saved your life. Whoever did those robberies might have been ninjas, but they weren't turtles. Either way, you're still news. You put us on TV and every scientist in town will be after us. 
You're staying here till we figure something out. We spent half our lives in a glass bowl, and we ain't going back. Later, as the turtles tried to decide what to do with April... I got it. She stays here with us for the rest of her life. Yeah, right. Try again, Mr. Wizard. Leonardo strapped his swords on his back. There's only one solution. We'll find those ninjas and April will get her story, leaving us out of it. Let's go! Meanwhile, at their boss's headquarters, the punks were telling their story to the boss. Uh, those four weirdos beat the pants off of us, Mr. Shredder. I know that, you idiots. Did they look like reptiles? Uh, I didn't get such a good look, you know. The Shredder shook his fist. Fools! They could have been turtles. I must know. Back beneath the city streets, the turtles in April busily searched through the sewers. We're not going to find anything here. This is where we fought those dudes. Maybe if... Look! Michelangelo picked up a matchbox from the ground. It had Ninja Pizza written on it. Wow, what luck! Do you know what this is? A crucial piece of evidence? The clue that will lead us to the heart of the evil ninja empire? Even better, it's a place where we can get some pizza. I'll check it out. No, April. You wouldn't last five minutes in a ninja pizza parlor. Besides, we're hungry. The turtles began climbing up a ladder to the street. April followed them. Moments later, at street level, April peered around the corner of a building. The turtles clustered behind her. We'll get nowhere unless we do something about your looks. Bingo! Stay here. There's a men's clothing store right down the street. April returned a short time later and handed each turtle a trench coat and a snap brim hat. This is the best I could do. Here's looking at you, kid. Just try not to draw attention to yourself, Raphael. I'm Leonardo. Oh, sorry. April and the turtles headed for the Ninja Pizza Parlor. It should be down the next block, okay, Donatello? I'm Michelangelo. The next block was lined with stores. A ninja pizza parlor, a ninja shoe repair, and a ninja cleaners. Hey, look, there it is. Hey, there's something suspicious about this neighborhood. They went into a pizza parlor. Two men were behind the counter. April didn't like their looks. I don't know about this place. <laughs> don't worry, April. Who ever heard of ninjas hanging out in a pizza parlor? One of the countermen suddenly stabbed a sword into the counter. Welcome to Ninja Pizza. Home of the nice slice. The turtle sat down at a table. April was still nervous. She looked at her new friends. But you're ninjas, and you're in a pizza parlor. A camera hanging in the corner of the room recorded everything as the shredder watched on his giant screen in the technodrome. This April O'Neill is getting too close to my operation. The turtles happily ate their pizza. Then they noticed April wasn't there. Hey, what happened to April? Hmm. I guess she wasn't hungry. Outside the pizza parlor, April did some snooping. She noticed the name on one of the buildings. Manhattan Security Service. Hmm. She pushed open the door and slipped into the building's lobby. A receptionist was speaking on a phone. Oh, why, of course we can help. We offer protection to many scientific firms throughout the city. Huh? Then the receptionist gave an order over a public address system. Security Team C, report to reception. A group of marching robots arrived at the reception area. The receptionist gave them instructions. I've got another scientific equipment company just waiting to be cleaned out. 
April realized what was happening. These robot foot soldiers were responsible for the robberies around town. She ran for the door. Oh no, I've got to get to a phone. Oh, hello, boss. I found the robbers. Send a crew to... Mm. A gloved hand was swiftly clamped over April's mouth. Then two masked men picked the reporter up and carried her off. April? April! Moments later, the turtles appeared on the scene. I'm worried about April. Look, it's her wallet, and here's her press pass. It's a trail. Let's go. As they approached a six-story building, Michelangelo looked up at the roof. Something was hanging over the edge. Look, her purse. Whoa, way to go, Hawkeye. The turtles ran up six flights of stairs to the top of the building and pushed open the door to the roof. Who should they spot but April, bound and gagged? April! Careful, Leo. It could be a trap. Suddenly, a group of masked men surrounded April. Yup, it's a trap! Raphael looked at his friends. Lose the coats, guys. It's go time! Donatello plunged his staff into one of the masked men, but the staff didn't even make a dent. Raphael struck another man with his scythe. Clang? Did you say clang? Leonardo's sword sliced through the robot's body. Metal innards spilled out. They're robots! Robots? Yahoo! Let's rock, dudes! Michelangelo cracked his nunchaku against one robot. Another robot put out a force field to pull Raphael toward him. Raphael grabbed onto a vent pipe. Some kind of tractor beam. Man, where are they getting their gear? Mars? Ugh, can't hold on much longer. Eat steel, creep! Raphael let go of the steel side. The strange beam pulled the glittering trident right into the robot, which exploded. The force field collapsed. As more robots approached, the four turtles ran behind a wall and pushed against it with all their might. Let's take out some of these metal monkeys. Push! <laughs> the wall crashed down, crushing the robots, as April looked on in amazement. Hope we didn't keep you waiting long, April. The turtles untied April and then ran to the edge of the roof. Some of the robots had escaped and were running across another rooftop. Oh no! They're getting away! Oh no, they're not! Leonardo tied a rope around his sword and hurled it down to the nearby roof of the Manhattan Security Service Building. Let's go, gang! One by one, April and the turtles slid down the taut rope. Once inside the building, they looked around in amazement. Where is everybody? Guys, look! This is an Acme Technologies digital transceiver. This is big league gear. Donatello stared into the transceiver's screens and saw the Shredder, who was in his surveillance room observing the turtles. Hey, who's the guy with the metal face? On the screen, the Shredder shook his fists. They are turtles. They must not discover my technodrome. An announcement came over the PA system. Returning to the Technodrome at once. Technodrome? Where's that? You mean, what's that? We came from the roof, so it must be down. Here's the stairs. Let's boogie! Minutes later, many floors below. <sighs> you stay here, April. We'll stop these foot creeps. In here, guys. Michelangelo ran into the basement room. Two footbots were turning large water valves. And what are they doing with those... Valves! Suddenly, a huge rush of water poured out of the pipes. April gasped as it came toward her. <gasps> Hold on, April! The turtles lifted her up. Thanks! The water's rising fast! We've got to get to the roof! Where are the Beach Boys when you need them? <laughs> Cowabunga! Floor by floor, the building filled up with water. Oh, come on, guys. Make for the stairs. <laughs> the turtles and April ran back up to the roof. 
The rope! It's our only chance! We gotta climb back the way we came. They grabbed onto the rope and hoisted themselves up hand over hand, just as a geyser of water exploded through the roof. Clinging safely to their rope, the turtles and April looked down at the chaos below. Whoa! Ha! I'd say that the ninja crime wave is a washout! <laughs> Later, back in their underground home, the turtles spread out the footbot's clothing they had brought back. Splinter looked at it. This is what the ninja robots wore. Oh, as I feared. It is the uniform of the Foot Clan. My old enemy, Oraku Sake, must be nearby. <laughs> Don't worry, Master Splinter. If that metal-faced goon shows up, we'll get him. We turtles don't know the meaning of defeat. Yeah. He never bothered to look it up. Yeah, 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 yeah. Don't you guys take anything seriously? The turtles grinned and held up slices of hot pizza. I should have known. Chapter 2 The following morning, April and the turtles made their way on underground pipes to the Manhattan Security Service Building. The tunnel was knee-deep in water. Finding the Technodrome is my only hope of getting a story out of this mess. We'll find it, April. It should be just ahead. Funny, we don't usually get much rain down here. That's not rain. It's water from last night's flood. They climbed through a large hole in a solid rock wall. The Technodrome should be right... here? The Technodrome had been there. But now, all that remained was a giant, empty cavern. It's gone. We've got to tell Splinter about this. What a story! Meanwhile, deep under the Earth's crust, the Technodrome was burrowing through solid rock, operated by its commander, the Shredder. And was he angry? I don't believe it. My ninja's beaten by a bunch of turtles. A command came over the PA system. Saki, this is Greg. Report to me at once. What now? The Shredder entered a room in the lower level of the Technodrome. There, connected to a life support system, sat a huge, slimy pink creature with tentacles. Well, what is it? Saki, my old. I told you to call me the Shredder. Krang snarled. <laughs> I have given you vast technical knowledge. You have not fulfilled your part of the bargain. You have not provided me with a potty. None of us are safe with those turtles hounding us. Then stop them. You are the one who tried to destroy Yoshi with that mutagen. But instead, he gained the powers of the rats. What if he had been here? A more powerful animal. Ha! That's it. I'll mutate my own people. All I need are killer animals. That's quite a brain you've got, Krang. Of course it is. It's all I've got. <laughs> The Shredder left on the run, while April, in the city sewer with the Turtles, came up with an idea. I'll check the newsroom and see if there's any word on the Technodrome's whereabouts. Very well. Come, my sons. Our adversary has quite a head start on us. Splinter ran off, with the Turtles close behind. Across town in the Central Park Zoo, something strange was happening. A sidewalk had begun to split open. Two robots wearing drills on their heads burst through the concrete. One of the robots cut through the bars of two cages with a white hot ray. Okay, buddy, you're coming with us. In a flash, the robots lassoed a wild boar and a rhino. Just come along quietly and you won't get hurt. Back underground, the turtles had made a discovery. 
This rock looks freshly drilled. Suddenly, they came up against a solid wall of fallen rock. Oh, no. There must have been a cave in. We'll never get through that. Head upwards, my sons. Try to find a way around all this. I'll try to get through somehow. We rats can burrow through anything. Inside the Technodrome, the Shredder talked to the punk thugs who had attacked April earlier. I need volunteers. I will give you the strength of a dozen ordinary men. Big hairy deal. We don't volunteer for nothing. But it will enable you to get even with the turtles who so recently humiliated you. I volunteer? No, me. Me, first. A short time later, Rocksteady and his punk pal Bebop were strapped down on tables. The Shredder, wearing a protective suit, held a glowing can. A can filled with a mysterious mutagen. Hey, what are you doing to us, man? Just relax. Suddenly, the door opened and two robots wheeled in with the zoo animals. What are them animals for? Meanwhile, the turtles were climbing up to the street. Light shone down on them from a sewer grate. That looks like the end of the line up ahead. They climbed out into the middle of a busy city street. I got a feeling we're not in Kansas anymore, Uncle Toto. Yikes, and I thought the sewers were bad, huh? Just then, the turtle spotted a building with Channel 6 on it. Hey, look, that's where April works. Let's find her. April was in a bad mood. She hadn't had much luck in the newsroom. She stomped down the hall deep in thought, determined to solve the case. Talking to my boss is like talking to a brick wall. I've got to get this story, or I might just get fired, all on account of those turtles. Hey, April! Oh, no! April told the turtles what she had managed to find out. I'm on a story that could lead us to the Technodrome. Don't laugh, but some robots stole two animals from the zoo. <laughs> Sounds weird enough. Let's check it out. Meanwhile, working far below ground, Splinter finally broke through the rock wall that separated his sewer from the Technodrome. At last! And what should he see but an enormous metal sphere with tank treads on its base? The Technodrome! I must find a way inside it! Splinter cautiously approached it. Suddenly, a hatch door opened on the side, and a lasso was flung around the rat. All right, buddy, just come along peacefully. Oh! A robot hauled Splinter up to the hatch. Don't make this any tougher on yourself. Meanwhile, April and the turtles had arrived at the Central Park Zoo. They looked at the hole made by the robots drilling. Uh, wait for us here, April. If there was a cave-in, we could dig our way out, but you couldn't. One by one, the turtles climbed into the hole. Oh, don't worry. We know how to handle ourselves in... So was. They fell straight onto something large and round and metallic. Yay! This is the Technodrome, I presume. The turtles quickly slid down the side of the Technodrome to the ground. Raphael recognized something. Oh, no. Splinter's walking stick. I hope he's not in trouble. But he is. If you want to see him again, you'll have to come in. It's gotta be a trap, but we have no choice. Inside his surveillance room, the Shredder watched on a screen as the turtles entered the halls of the Technodrome. Now we'll see how good you turtles really are. The turtles stalked down a corridor. Be careful, guys. Who knows what might be in here? Suddenly, a door slid open. Oh! Team, we are in deep trouble. Robots! Robots. And pretty mean-looking ones, too. Well, team, there's only one thing to do. Run away? Leonardo whipped out his swords. Attack! Oh. A steel sawing machine flung a saw blade straight at Leonardo, narrowly missing him. Yikes! A giant mechanical claw reached out to grab Michelangelo. Good, dude. Another robot fired lasers at Donatello, who jumped up to avoid them. Donatello smashed his wooden staff onto the robot's head. 
Even lasers are no match for a nice strong stick, huh? Michelangelo furiously fought off the robot with the mechanical claw-like arms. Gotcha! The saw blade tossing robot continued to buzz at Leonardo. I must concentrate now! As the machine's blades whirled around, the turtles rapidly sliced through its arms. <laughs> turtles fight with honor! Another huge robot with pincers grabbed Raphael. We were trained to fight people, not can openers. Let me go, you junk heap! Raphael, look out behind you! Just then, an enormous steel spool came flying through the air. Raphael stabbed the robot's pincers with his sai and ducked as Michelangelo shoved another robot on top of Raphael's attacker. <laughs> Pieces of smoking metal lay scattered around the room. That's it. I'd say we were decorated this place nicely. Let's find Master Splinter. Donatello picked up something from the floor. Hmm, some kind of power pack. This could be useful. Suddenly, the door ahead slammed shut. Oh, great! Now we have to go back. Oh, no, we don't. Look! Run! A machine at the other end of the hall was rolling toward the turtles. They ran for the closed door, and the Shredder watched it all with evil satisfaction from his surveillance room inside the Technodrome. <laughs> just one chance. This magnetic power pack might just do the trick. Donatello quickly attached the power pack to the door. Leo, throwing star time. Hurry up, that killer rolling pin is almost here. Leonardo flung his throwing star at the power pack. Hey! A giant explosion blew open a hole in the door, but the rolling machine had almost reached them. Here it comes! We're too late! Everybody jump! Now! Yeah! The turtles safely landed on the other side of the jagged hole. <laughs> that was just too close. Look! Master Splinter! Sure enough, there was the rat tied up and dangling from a rope. Don't worry, Master, we'll get you down. Suddenly, they heard the Shredder's voice. I must congratulate you. What? There stood the Shredder with his footbot soldiers. Oh, wonderful. It's the same ninja goons we fought last night. You passed your test with flying colors. Test? What test? You have proved yourself worthy to join the Honorable Foot Clan. Dream on, Tin Face. I am the Shredder. A kitchen utensil? You would be wise to lose your flippant ways. It was I who made you what you are today. I followed Hamato Yoshi to this country where I gained my advanced technology including my experimental mutagen. It was I who caused you to change into your human form. You owe everything to me. Don't deny your destiny. Join me. Does the phrase, go suck a lemon, hold any meaning for you? Let's cut Splinter down and boogie on out of here. Fools! Very well. I have my own mutants. Bebop, rock steady. In ran the two punks from opposite sides of the room. Each had been transformed by the mutagen into a half-human, half-animal. The Shredder gave them an order. Destroy the turtles! With pleasure, Master Shredder. <laughs> yeah. The turtles were surrounded. Okay, team, get ready to jump! The turtles leaped up and grabbed onto Splinter's rope. <sighs> Rocksteady and Bebop crashed into one another. <laughs> you idiots! The turtles looked down at the fallen mutapunks. Well, I see that that mutation didn't up their IQs any. Footbots, attack! Hearing the Shredder's command, the turtles dropped down to the ground to defend themselves. <laughs> Rock, dudes! Michelangelo whipped out his nunchakus. The other turtles entered the fray. Leonardo's sword sliced through a footbot. Four! Donatello struck a footbot through its neck. Soon the gang of footbots lay lifeless. 
so much for the ninja robots. Let's cut Splinter down and blow this pop stand. Leonardo carried the rat down the hall. The other turtles followed them. He's very weak. Let's get home. He needs rest. The turtles took Splinter up to the street level. They pushed open a manhole cover and found themselves right outside the zoo. <sighs> All clear. Rest here, master. Leonardo settled Splinter on a bench, just as a rumbling began underground. What? Rocksteady and Bebop burst through the concrete sidewalk with blaster weapons blazing. Say your prayers, titles. Donatello grabbed the manhole cover and used it as a shield. Well, let's annihilate these turkeys. Leonardo's sword cut Rocksteady's weapon in half. My gun! No fair! Sorry. Raphael's size smashed Bebop's blaster. Oops. Ooh. The Mutabons were defeated for now. But, Raphael frowned. We'll never stop those two. They belong in a zoo, not on the streets. Exactly. Chased by Rocksteady and Bebop, the turtles ran to the zoo and into an empty cage with raised bars. We got you now! Raphael waved to the angry punks. Come on! The Mutabunks entered the cage. The party's over! Now, Mike, jump! Close it, Donatello. And the turtle slipped out, just as Donatello hit an emergency button that lowered the cage bars. Let us out, you creeps! You guys are dumb, dumb, dumb! Hey, look! Here comes April! You missed most of the good stuff, April. But check out these goons! April aimed a minicam at the caged mutopunks. Oh, wow! Let us out, you little web-footed runts. I'll make you eat that camera, you little creep! The turtles, Splinter and April, climbed into the Channel 6 van. Come, we must get Splinter home to rest. Hey, let us out of here! Suddenly, a robot broke through the sidewalk and zapped open the cage bars with a ray gun. The Shredder wants to see you. Oh, could you maybe leave us in here, please? Chapter 3. Later in the Turtles' sewer headquarters, April and the Turtles discussed what to do next. Splinter will be fine. He just needs rest. The Shredder must pay for this. Leonardo looked at Splinter. Stay with him, April. Come on, guys, let's find that Technodrome. Meanwhile, the Shredder had used the Technodrome to burrow into an abandoned mansion somewhere downtown. He looked intently at a portable screen he had set up in the house. So, my surveillance has picked up something that may prove quite useful. On his screen, the Shredder could see and hear two men. One was an inventor named Baxter Stockman. He was trying to sell his latest invention to the owner of a pest control company. You see, just as a rat follows its nose to the cheese, my mouser robot will follow its nose to the rat. Nothing will stop it. What do you think? Are you nuts? These things would put my pest control company out of business. Get out! The Shredder got an idea as he watched the scene. This could be the solution to my own rat problem. <laughs> A short time later, the Shredder was lurking outside the pest control building as the discouraged inventor came out. Baxter Stockman. Another rejection. Nobody is interested in my mousers. Huh? Who are you? Someone who wants to produce your mousers on a vast scale. Well, it's about time. Back in the sewers, the turtles were pushed. We've been at this all day and no sign of the Technodrome. We have to keep looking. The Shredder must be stopped. And he's the only hope we have of getting our master returned to his human form. The Shredder took Baxter back to the abandoned mansion. Everything you need is here. You will construct a master control for the mousers. In this dump? Then Baxter pointed to the remote control he had with him. But uh, what's wrong with this controller? Simple stockman. By morning I will have constructed hundreds of these robots. It will take massive amounts of power to control them. Get to work! 
Far below in the technodrome, the shredder went to work. When there was a sudden interruption. Analysis of robot complete. Ready to begin production. Shredder, I want to see you. Blast! Perfect timing as usual, Krang. The shredder went to see what Krang wanted. Why are you wasting your time on mouse traps? When you have not yet given me a body. My problem is more urgent. Hamato Yoshi and his turtles will ruin us all if they are not stopped. Ah, there would be no problem if I had a body. This is my fight, Krang. Saki, get back here. Those turtles have defeated you before, Saki. I hope you fail again and again until you have no choice but to give me a body. The annoyed Shredder went back to work. The Mousers have been programmed. They will succeed where my mutants failed. The Shredder looked at the dozen robot Mousers gathered in front of him. Go! Seek out Hamato Yoshi and destroy him. Turtles headquarters, Splinter had woken up. How are you feeling, Splinter? Oh, a bit better. Saki gave me quite a going over. Listen, I've got to go home for a while. Tell those turtle boys I'll be back soon. Very well, April. Oh, I must meditate to clear my mind. Huh? What? A group of robot mousers broke through the wall. Splinter picked up a club. So, Oruko Sake is reduced to sending robots after me. Splinter fought off the mousers as fast as he could. Too many! Ah. Suddenly, the turtles swung into the room. My sons! Heads up, Splinter! It's the cavalry! Rock and roll! A short time later, the last of the robots were destroyed. What a mess! Raphael picked up a broken mouser and looked at it. Where did these metal maniacs come from? Baxter Stockman inventions? I don't know, but I can practically smell the shredder behind this. We must find this Stockman, and through him, find the shredder. I suggest we use April's skills as a reporter to help us. Let's go! The Shredder was furious when he found out what had happened. Uh, my mouse has destroyed by those reptiles. They beat 12 of my robots, but they'll never be able to beat 1,200. <laughs> Meanwhile, the Turtles and Splinter had arrived at April's apartment. They brought along a chunk of Mouser. What are you doing here? Did anyone see you? We're looking for the guy who built this. His name's Baxter Stockman. We think he's working with the Shredder. April plunked herself down at her desk. I'll access the news computer and see what we've got on Stockman. Hmm, not much. Here's his address. You guys go check it out, and leave Splinter here to rest. Okay, April. Thanks. At the mansion, Baxter had finished building the master control. It's done, and I'm leaving. I haven't slept all night. Very well. Go. The Shredder turned to his footbots. He knows too much. Put him out of the way. 
Then the Shredder looked at the hundreds of robot mousers. Now, my children, seek out Hamato Yoshi, the Four Turtles, and that newswoman, April O'Neil. Destroy them all! A while later, a tired Baxter Stockman arrived home. He parked his van and climbed the front steps to his building. Boy, am I beat. All those mousers. That shredder must really have a thing about rats. Suddenly, Baxter heard footsteps behind him. He turned around to see two footbots with their weapons drawn. What? Well, now what? The turtles were hiding beneath the steps. Ready? Surprise! They leaped out and attacked the footbots. Michelangelo cracked his nunchakas into a footbot. Donatello shoved his feet into the other one. Mr. Foot, meet Mr. Feet. We're getting good at this bot kicking, don't you think? The turtles then quickly tied Baxter to a lamppost so he wouldn't get away from them. Leonardo pointed to Baxter's mouser control. Let's chat, Pally. What's this thing? It's a control for my mousers. Do you have any more of these mousers? No, but the Shredder does. Hundreds of them. Where is he? I'll never talk. Raphael touched the point of his sigh and sneered. Oh, no? Uh, uh, okay, okay. He's in an old mansion on Green Street. He's got a master control for all the mousers there. Green Street's all the way downtown. We'll have to take the van. The turtles piled into Baxter's van. Hey, Mike, I didn't know that you could drive. <laughs> Me neither. Cowabunga! Uh, guys, has it occurred to you just how easily those mousers found Splinter? Yeah, so? So if there are hundreds of them now, April and Splinter! Michelangelo turned the van around and headed for April's apartment, but she and Splinter were already in trouble. This apartment! April and Splinter tried to beat off the mousers. April with a pan and Splinter with his club. I feel we are about to join our ancestors, April. It's been swell knowing you, Splinter. Suddenly, the turtle swung through a window and into the fray. Yeah! Huh? Right if we join in the fun, the building is shaking apart. April, guys, hit the ropes! With a final bashing of the mousers, the turtles, April and Splinter, climbed out of the window. They quickly hauled themselves up on ropes dangling from the roof of a nearby building. Adios, tin heads! Give our regards to the Shredder! Using Baxter's information, the turtles drove to the abandoned mansion. We've got to get in there and knock out the main control for the mousers. I agree. Let's go. Hang on. Don't you think that one turtle would have a better chance of getting in there? Raphael grinned and slapped Michelangelo on the back. Okay. Good luck, Mike. Don't forget to write. Uh -oh. You could have tried to talk me out of it. Michelangelo slipped inside the mansion. <laughs> this is going to be easier night. Thought. The Shredder was pointing a gun right at his face. Not so fast, Turtle Boy. He tied up Michelangelo and then returned to his surveillance screen to watch the van. So, they are all here. Good. Time to give my mousers new orders. Left in another room, Michelangelo struggled to get free. <laughs> Gotta get free and stop those robots. He didn't see Krang's tentacles creeping towards him. Meanwhile, his friends were in danger, too. More robot mousers had surrounded the van. Here they come. I hope that Michelangelo got the master control turned off. Leonardo clicked Baxter's little remote control, but the robots kept coming closer. They're still coming! <laughs> Back in the mansion, Krang grabbed hold of Michelangelo. Don't move. Huh? What the? Krang untied the ropes around Michelangelo. The room with the master control is one flight up. Go and destroy it. 
Why should I believe a talking brain? No time to argue. Your friends are in danger. Hurry. Krang was right. They sure were in danger and were now on top of the van. I don't have a good feeling about this. Meanwhile, whirling his nunchakas, Michelangelo went looking for the Shredder. Heads up, Shredder. It's party time. What the devil? Whoa! Michelangelo leaped up to avoid the Shredder's gun and ran over to the master control. Big man with a gun. Hit me with your best shot, Smiley. As the Shredder fired at Michelangelo, the turtle dove out of the way and the deadly rays hit the control panel. <laughs> Sucker! Oh no! The master control! Back at the van, April and her pals realized what had happened. Look! They're not moving! Mike did it! Yahoo! Hey, let's use Baxter's controller to give him some new marching orders. One by one, the Mousers headed back up the hill to the mansion. Inside, the Shredder scrambled to get down underground. I must get back to the Technodrome. Hey, come back here and fight like a turtle. Abruptly, the old building collapsed. The turtles ran over to the rubble. Mike! A pile of wooden boards nearly covered Michelangelo. Oh no! Mike, are you okay? Leonardo pulled away the wood, and Michelangelo sat up with a laugh. <laughs> I just love hide-and-seek, don't you? Oh, well, now that we know he's okay, can I kill him? Raphael peered into a hole in the ground. I don't suppose I have to say this, but the Technodrome is gone again! Oh, well, at least we stopped those mouses. You wouldn't believe the weird dude I saw in the house. A talking brain with squinty eyes and sharp teeth and... Uh-huh. As the turtles drove away... And no, real, and it had these, these tentacles. Michelangelo, I think that you finally had one pizza too many. <laughs> Chapter 4 The turtles drove the van back to Baxter's house. So let me get this straight. We're going to use all the equipment Baxter left at his place to turn the van into a tracking station? Yeah, to hunt down the Technodrome. Leonardo pointed up to Baxter's apartment. Okay, but how are we going to get it up there? Leonardo was sorry that he asked, because the turtles had to push the van upstairs step by step as April steered. Ask a silly question, get a silly answer, they always say. Just push, Raphael. Finally, they reached Baxter's crowded workroom. Wow. Look at all this stuff. I bet Donatello could whip up some heavy-duty turtle gear with all these spare parts. But, like, what if Baxter comes back? He won't be back for a long time, Mike. The authorities didn't like him trying to take over the city with his Mousers. Ew, I wonder if all this work is worth it. It will be when we hunt down the Shredder. But why do we have to do it? It's the human's problem. He seemed to have it in for you guys, too. Or had you forgotten? Meanwhile, deep under the city, Krang chewed out the Shredder. You idiot, Saki. You can't even beat a bunch of stupid turtles. You're wasting time on them when you should be working on my new body. My stone warriors are waiting in Dimension X to overrun this planet, but I can't let them see me like this. The Shredder smiled cruelly behind his mask. Dimension X, of course. It is a place of total war. I can get the weapons I need to destroy the turtles by pulling them through Dimension X. No. Saki, there's no telling what might come through. The transdimensional portal is complete. Soon Hamato Yoshi and his accursed turtles will die. Ha ha ha. 
Back at Baxter's, Donatello stood proudly in front of the renovated van. <laughs> Finished. And not a bad job, if I do say so myself. All those gadgets and no pizza oven? Now look, guys, I put in every gadget I could think of to help us find the shredder. This is as good as it gets. Now, do you want to find the Technodrome or not? Yeah! yeah. The turtles climbed aboard, and April sat in the driver's seat. Okay, April, it will be a lot easier going down than it was coming up. We'll have gravity on our side. That's what I'm afraid of. April started up the van and steered it toward the stairs. Here we go! Yeah! Ah! Piece of cake! Cowabunga! In the Technodrome, the Shredder mulled over his plan. In a moment, the gateway between Earth and Dimension X will be opened, and my destiny will be fulfilled. Bebop, Rocksteady, and the Shredder looked up at a giant glowing screen filled with swirling mist. All those weapons from beyond our universe will be mine. The Earth itself will be mine. Open the portal now! Something's coming through! Suddenly, two starmobiles roared out of the screen and into the room. <laughs> What's this? The Shredder turned to the Mutopunks. Stop them, you fools! They're blasting through the wall! Yahoo! The cars drove through a hole in the Technodrome and disappeared. The Shredder looked back at the screen. Something else is coming through the portal. Clans, stone warriors! Why? Jump! The two stone warriors jumped from their jeep just as it crashed into the wall. But I thought we were weird looking. Okay, Bebop, let's turn these rock faces into gravel. Meanwhile, two other mysterious vehicles from Dimension X burst out of the Technodrome. Yeehaw! The Shredder stopped the Stone Warriors. Cease fire. You are Krang Stone Warriors, are you not? Yeah, foe. Come with me. Uh, we was just starting to have fun. As April drove the Turtles' van down a nearby street, the Starmobiles shot out of a subway entrance. And the sensors say that the Technodrome is right below us. Whoa! What was that? I don't know, but it can only mean the Shredder. We better follow them. Meanwhile, the Shredder had brought the two stone warriors to Krang. Lord Krang, what happened to your body? Don't look at me. I lost it when they banished me to this miserable mud ball. What are you doing here, Trag? The neutrinos have eluded us. Neutrinos? Running loose? Here. Saki, you imbecile. What did I do? Who are these neutrinos? They're juvenile delinquents from Dimension X. They hate war. They are a threat to everything we stand for. And worse, they encourage people to have fun. They must be stopped. Back on the city streets, the neutrinos roared above the van's roof. be able to keep up with them. We'll have to try to head them off. Ready? Activate Turtle Launcher. Cowabunga! A pair of turtles flew through the air towards each Starmobile. Okay, buddy. Pull over. Let me go, daddy -o. Whoa! Okay, out of the car. Chill out, you cube. The three neutrinos got out of their cars. The Shredder must be really desperate to be throwing geeks like you after us. The who? Don't tell us you never heard of the Shredder. Dig cats, one minute we're in Dimension X and then suddenly we're in a room with some weirdo in a metal mask. Holy smoke, I think we're on the same side. You got him. Relax, April, they're on our side. Huh? Zack raised his sunglasses and took a look at April. Soon April, the Turtles, and their new friends were playing pinball and video games in a nearby luncheonette. We thought this was a planet of squares, man! But dig it! This is the swingin' nest! What's Dimension X like? 
It's Grimsville, man. All the grown-ups ever do is fight. Us neutrinos are the only ones who like having fun. And most of the time, they won't let us. Oh, don't cry, Calla. What's the matter, April? I'm worried about what else might have come through from Dimension X. Just as she spoke, a techno rover burst into the luncheonette. Yow! All right, neutrinos, come on out. Who are these dudes? Some warriors from Dimension X. They're very bad. I guess that part. Let's go. Hurry, guys. The turtles ran for their van, and the neutrinos hopped into the starmobiles. <laughs> and we thought this place was Dollsville, but this is a blast! Gun it, April. Let's show these rock creeps what the turtle van can do. Nice shooting, daddy <laughs> ah, Let's go back and finish them! No, I hear police sirens. Let's split. Anyway, those stone warriors could be just the beginning. We've got to consult Splinter before we go any further. Frank and Morg were furious. This weather maker will take care of those turtles and the neutrinos with them. Come, we must get back and protect Lord Krang. A short time later in the sewer... From what you say, this Krang must be the strange creature Michelangelo told us about yesterday. Yeah, dudes. And you thought I was nuts. So if the Shredder is hooked up with this alien, that explains where he's getting all this high-tech gear. I dig it, sister! Somehow, we've got to stop Krang and send him back to Dimension X for good. Oh, is that all? Come on. Outside, moments later. Rock, dudes! Check it out, snow! In June? <laughs> it must be a stone warrior weather maker. It will get a lot worse than this. It will keep building till it destroys the city. We'll have to deal with it later. First, we have to get back to the Technodrome and stop Krang. Luckily, the Technodrome hadn't moved since the last encounter. The turtles and neutrinos hopped into the Starmobiles and zoomed back into the Technodrome toward the giant screen. April sure was mad about us leaving her behind again, but this is just too dangerous. <laughs> Dig it, cats and kittens! The dimensional part! You guys, go find Krang. Leo and I will work on the portal. Try to figure out those controls, Donatello. I've got you covered. I'm trying. Elsewhere in the Technodrome... I'm getting some strange life readings ahead. It could be... Bingo! There sat Krang on his life support system, protected by Trag and Morg. There he is, the brains of this operation. We're sitting ducks here. Sensors say he's got a force field around him. We gotta scram! Catch you later, Brainhead. After them, you fools. Back at the huge screen, Donatello had gotten lucky. Guys, hurry! I've got the portal open, but I can't hold it too long. Here come the blockheads. Remember, team, use their momentum. Elliot? <laughs> okay, neutrinos, you're next. This is your only ticket home, and I can't hold it open much longer. It's been a blast, cool cats, but we've got to carry on the fight against crime. So long, you crazy turtles! <laughs> Come on, gang. We've got no time to lose. With Raphael at the wheel of the other Starmobile, the turtles zoomed out of the Technodrome. That weather doohickey must be tearing up the city by now. There it is! Leonardo, wait! With a fierce stroke of his sword, Leonardo sliced right through the satellite weather maker. Nice catch! Way to go, Leo! Back in the Technodrome, the Shredder faced Krang. All right, Krang. I'll complete your new body if that's what it takes. <laughs> to destroy the turtles once and for all. Chapter 5. 
Sometime later in the sewers, Splinter came to a decision. The time has come for the final battle with my old enemy. I agree. The Shredder must be put... Greetings, ah! 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 Turtles. It was the Shredder on the Turtles TV screen. Hey, since when did the Shredder get his own daytime talk show? What I have in my hand is a retro mutagen gun, a device which undoes mutations. The Shredder pointed the gun at a mutapunk. Like so. This is the only thing which can restore Splinter to the form of Hamato Yoshi. If you want it, come and get it. That's it. We're out of here. Let's go. No, my son's wet. I must go alone. Huh? The ray could restore me to my human form. But think of what it could do to you. It could turn us back into regular turtles. <gasps> Meanwhile, in the Technodrome, the Shredder gave his mutopunks an order. Bebop, rock steady. The turtles are on their way. Stop them. <laughs> Back on the street, the turtles took off in the Starmobile that the Neutrinos had left behind. Oh, good thing we've still got this car. It should come in handy. Now what? Sounds like it's out of fuel. And just what kind of fuel does it take? Plutonium, I think. Right. Let's just push it into the nearest plutonium station and fill it up. Oh, great. And April's got the turtle van. Now what? Well, I guess we'll just have to hot-foot it over to the Technodrome. Are you nuts? We need the weapons on this thing. I saw something in Baxter's workshop we could use. It'll take some work, but... I'll meet you at the Technodrome! Suddenly, Splinter and the other three turtles were surprised by Bebop and Rocksteady. Urk! We've got a score to settle with you green freaks. Stop now! <laughs> Rocksteady flung Leonardo and Michelangelo at a trash can. Bebop grabbed Splinter around the neck. We don't like rats in our fair city, so... Not so fast, homeboy. Raphael pushed a dumpster into Bebop as Splinter wriggled free. Take this, you web-footed geeks! Michelangelo and Raphael ducked behind a brick wall. That boy sure seems to like his work. Come on, I got an idea. The turtles hopped into the cab of a cement mixer, so the mutopunks couldn't see them. Okay, come on out. I promise we won't hurt you. Much. Ready? Reaching around, Leonardo switched the mixer to on. Huh? What the? Now! In an instant, the mutopunks were covered in cement. Come back here and fight, you masked uh, morons! We'd love to stay, but we've got an appointment with your boss. Sit tight now. Back in the Technodrome, Krang was anxious. For the last time, Saki, why haven't you finished my new body? Oh, but I have. At last. An operating table was wheeled into the room. A sheet covered Krang's new body. Excellent. I want you to add this molecular amplification circuit do it. But why? Saki, you fool. Don't waste time. Your forces are depleted. And the turtles are on their way. Install the circuit now. All right. I'll do it. The shredder opened the metal body and carefully placed Krang in its stomach cavity. You may feel some disorientation at first. Yes. Yes, hurry. It's alive. <laughs> the turtles are doomed. Meanwhile, Splinter and three of the turtles had reached the outside of the Technodrome. The hole the neutrinos blasted looks like the only way in. Let's go. Raphael swung a grappling hook up to the hole. Then he and the others scrambled up a rope toward it. But they had been spotted. Attention. 
Turtle alert. Oh no, the turtle's here so soon. Krang is still unconscious. Footbots, stop those turtles. A group of footbots poured out of the Technodrome. Uh-oh! The footbots hit their target. The turtle's rope snapped in two and the turtles fell to the ground. Whoa, my aching head. But Splinter had safely made it to the hole. Good luck, my sons, to all of us. I don't know about you guys, but I'm getting real tired of playing footsie with these metal dudes. I hear you, Mike. Back in Baxter's lab, Donatello was hard at work. Almost done. Hope the guys are okay. But they weren't. Fighting the footbots was exhausting. This could go on all day. We've got to stop him now. That drain pipe might just do the trick. Leonardo leaped up and slashed a huge sewer pipe in half. How about some raw sewage, metalheads? Hiya! Ha! Huh. And away go troubles down the drain. Look out, Shredder! Here we come. Inside the Technodrome, Krang was slowly waking up. The operating table tilted forward, and Krang's new robot body stepped off and flexed its powerful arms. I must contact my legions in Dimension X. The time has come to conquer the Earth. Once inside the Technodrome, the turtles ran down a corridor. Splinter is in here alone. We've got to find him. Raphael pointed to a screen. On it, they could see a huge figure standing in front of a giant console. Hey, look at this. It's the room with the gateway to Dimension X. Who's that dude? I don't know. But the guy in his stomach looks like Krang. He's going to bring his soldiers over from Dimension X. That's what he thinks. Come on! In another part of the Technodrome, Splinter had made a discovery. The Retromutagen gun. Oh, soon I will be human once more. What? It's disappearing. Not so fast, Tomato Yoshi. It was the Shredder. You've come at last, eh, old fool? Saki! I am here. Or am I here? Splinter hurled his stick at the different shredders, but it did no good. <laughs> Splinter angrily kicked out at the fourth shredder, knocking him down. Ugh, a lucky shot, old man. The shredder got to his feet. Something sharp gleamed on his arms and hands. But if you want the retro mutagen ray, you must first face my blades. Very well. And I shall defeat you as I did when I was human. Meanwhile, at the portal screen, Krang was ready for action, too. This is Lord Krang, calling General Trang in Dimension X. Are you there? I'm here, Lord. Stand by while I open the portal. Then lead my troops here to conquer this world. You're going to have to conquer us first. That should be easy. Let's see how the molecular amplification circuit works. Yikes! He's growing! <laughs> In terror, the turtles turned and ran. I don't remember this part of the plan, Leonardo. Oh, shut up and keep running. Now you will face the wrath of Gran. Wasn't that the, the name of a movie? Krang punched a hole in the tunnel's roof and pulled himself up to the opening. What's he doing? He's climbing up to the streets. We've got to follow him. Meanwhile, back at Baxter's lab, Donatello was pumping helium into the contraption he had built. Hang on, guys. I'm almost done. I just hope I can get this thing out of here. Krang was out on the streets. 
and breaking everything in sight. We've got to stop him! I'm open to suggestions. Back in the Technodrome, the Shredder and Splinter continue their battle. You wretched rodent, I will see you dead. You have forgotten the lessons I taught you, Saki! Uh, uh. While out on the street, Krang attempted to squash the turtles. Uh, well, it's been great knowing you. Suddenly, machine gun fire hit Krang's body. What the heck? Come on, guys! It's Donatello! Sure enough, Donatello was at the controls of an enormous green blimp. The turtles scaled a rope ladder up to the glider just below the blimp. <laughs> Welcome aboard the turtle blimp. Does this thing really work? Just watch! Donatello released the glider from the blimp, and the four turtles zoomed off towards Krang. Instant turtle glider! When Krang's back was turned, Leonardo and Donatello jumped from the glider onto the robot's giant shoulder. Geronimo! Aya! The only way to stop this creep is to shrink him down to size. And we can only do that from inside. We can force our way in through that seam on his shoulder. Just then, April and the news crew drove up. What the heck is that? I leave these turtle boys alone for a few hours and they end up fighting a giant with a brain in his stomach. Gross. April jumped out of the van and aimed a camera at the scene. But wait till the world gets a load of this. Inside Krang's robot body, Donatello took out his turtle communicator. I'm getting some heavy energy readings in this direction. Back at the glider, Raphael and Michelangelo hung on tightly. I don't know what all these buttons are for, but... Just improvise. Michelangelo pushed one of the buttons, and a weapon opened fire directly at Krang. Huh? You see? Piece of cake! Krang's robot body shook from the impact, and inside it, Leonardo and Donatello were pretty shaken up, too. Whoa! Kind of bumpy in here. I wish Krang was lighter on his feet. All I can figure is that it must be some kind of molecular amplification circuit that made him grow. There it is! We gotta knock it out! Donatello lifted his wooden staff. I hope this works. Inside the Technodrome, Splinter continued to attack the Shredder. You have corrupted my teachings and brought dishonor upon the once noble Foot Clan. Now, you will pay for your crimes. <laughs> Michelangelo and Raphael were in trouble, too. Krang reached up to grab the glider. Watch it, Mike. Don't get too... close. Uh-oh. Inside Krang's body, Donatello shattered the molecular amplification circuit with his wooden staff. No time to be delicate. Be ready to move fast if this works. He'll start to shrink and we'll have to get out quick. Hi! Then Donatello and Leonardo scrambled out of the robot's body and onto his shoulder just as the glider narrowly escaped Krang's clutch. Whoa, close call. Guys, over here. <laughs> Need a lift? Ha, he's shrinking quick. It worked. At that moment, the daring turtles landed on the street and confronted Krang. No, I am Krang, the old power. That's cause you've never tangled with turtles before, pal. Krang called on the one person who could help him. Shredder, come quickly, I need you. Inside the Technodrome, the battle between Splinter and the Shredder continued. Oh, oh. Sorry, but I must bring our game to an early conclusion. The Shredder shot a ray at Splinter, throwing the rat to the floor. Besides, uh, you wouldn't have won anyway. <laughs> oh, must stop him. The Shredder rushed to Krang's aid. Uh-oh, here comes the Shredder. Saki, hurry. And he's got that retro muta thingamabob with him. One wrong move and it's back to the pet store for us. The Shredder aimed the retro mutagen gun at the turtles. Farewell, turtles. Saki. Suddenly, Splinter appeared. Hurling his stick right at the gun, he smashed it to pieces. No! Master, that device was your only hope of regaining your human form. Oh, I had to destroy it to save you, my son. Besides, 
Perhaps it is my karma to live my life as a rat. Now come. We must get back to the Technodrome and stop crying in the shredder for good. Moments later, inside the Technodrome, the turtles ran to the portal screen. Raphael kicked a footbot out of the way. Sorry, buddy, but we need that console. Do your stuff, Donatello. As Donatello pushed levers on the console, images began to swirl on the screen. Hurry, Don. They're coming through the portal. Almost done. There. Everybody, run! This air duct is the quickest way out. Cowabunga! Soon the turtles and Splinter were safely outside the Technodrome, while the Technodrome began slipping into the shimmering portal screen. Whoa! Mega strange! It's gone! What did you do, Donatello? I reversed the flow of the portal and it sucked itself into Dimension X. <laughs> Way to go, Don! Run, run, dude. Run, dude! We won! Yeah, Yay! Dude. Sure is handy having a mad scientist on our side. <laughs> <laughs> Meanwhile, in Dimension X, Krang was happy too. Home at last. Now I can conquer my own world. But I wanted to conquer Earth, Krang. You're in Dimension X now, Saki. Here, you take orders from me. The Shredder takes orders from no one. We shall see. Later, back in their sewer home, the Turtles and Splinter turned on the TV. I fear we have not seen the last of Krang or the Shredder. Look, <laughs> it's April. The Turtles became heroes as they fought off an alien invasion. But who are they? Where did they come from? It is still a mystery. But I'll continue to update the exploits of these teenage mutant ninja turtles. April O'Neil, Happy Hour News. Rad, dudes. Now we can relax and watch some tube and forget about all the weirdness we just went through. Stay tuned for tonight's chiller thriller theater feature, The Evil Brain from Dimension X. Oh, no!